So it occurred to me that while I talked uh, a lot about how uh, to actually create these assets, I didn't actually talk about the playback system that was running them uh, for the show. And so I wanted to take just a second to cover how um, we used Isadora to control media playback for this particular production. Um, so I've got a, an Isadora window open here waiting for uh, me to do a little bit of show programming here. And if you're not familiar with Isadora, Isadora is essentially a show control system um, that's kind of specialty built for uh, performance in general, um, that has a lot of the functionality that you find inside of Max, uh, a lot of the functionality that you find uh, in something like Modulate or MadMapper, um, and it's maybe not quite as robust as all of those individual tools, um, but it is a really robust system by itself for controlling placement of media and playback of media, especially in a theatrical kind of setting. So I just want to cover quickly what that actually looks like. So what we have here to start with is this is our kind of um, editing and control space. And uh, the first thing here I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on my um, grid. So I'm going to show grid and turn grid snap on just because I like this to be tidy. And before I get started, one of the things that I want to make sure that I'm doing is I'm actually going to go up here to Windows and I want to, or excuse me, Output, and I want to show my stages. Now for Isadora, stages are essentially the same thing as uh, projectors. Now I don't have a projector connected to this computer right now, um, but it will give me a kind of phony stage so I can see where my media is being placed in relation to this particular kind of spatial arrangement. So I've got a stage here so I can see what my media is looking like when it's showing up. Um, and the next thing I need to do is I actually need to import some media. So I want to import some media here. Um, and I know that what some of the things that I want to grab to pull into this um, are in an old folder here uh, that's going to help us um, give me a couple different things uh, to work from in terms of examples. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab these three movies here because I want to be able to use all three of them. And what that's going to do is that actually in my little media window here in Isadora, this is essentially like a bin um, that you might use in Final Cut or in Premiere. So these are my source um, materials, and they are uh, numbered numerically. Now this will be important here in a second. Isadora, like Max, is an object-oriented methodology for programming um, a kind of visual environment, in this case specifically a theatrical environment. So with my bin of assets over here, I want to go ahead and I want these three videos to play back on my stage, my imaginary projected space, and I want them to be able to play back at the same time and layered on top of one another. Now in order to do that, I need to get started first by making a movie player. So my movie player here is essentially uh, my control for telling Isadora that I wanted to play a movie. So I need to select a movie here that corresponds to one of the numbers over here in my bin. So in this case, I want to play back movie number one. Now, this is great. It's playing the movie back. Uh, Isadora uses a position-based system instead of time code, so it uh, rates everything from 0 to 100 uh, as a float value. And that's great. That's a wonderful way to be able to kind of visually see what's going on with all of these different uh, systems. Um, it's just important to know that's the way that Isadora is playing back video. We can also see that the loop mode is on, so this is just going to play in a loop. I can watch the little progress bar proceed to the end, wrap back around at the beginning, which is great. But I'm not seeing anything output on my stage, and that's because my movie player isn't in fact connected to anything. So the next thing I need to do is I need to create a projector object. So here with my projector object, now I can go ahead and connect the video out from my movie player to my projector's video import. And there we go. Now I can see that my movie's playing back. One of the things I'm noticing though is it looks like the aspect ratio is not quite right here. And in fact, if I look at my projector, I can see that my aspect ratio, and I keep aspect ratio as in maintain it, is turned off. I want to go ahead and turn that on to make sure that I force my projector to maintain the proportions of my asset. Great, so now I've got one asset playing. Now if I want to go ahead and um, get my other two videos to play, I can go ahead and select that particular arrangement, and I can just use Command-D to duplicate that movie player. So now I've got two more of these wonderful little contraptions here. So I'm going to move these kind of in tandem with one another. I'm going to go ahead and try and keep them lined up so this is nice and tidy. 
Great. And I can see here now that I can uh, have got these two playing that it doesn't look like I've got any different videos playing. And that's because what I need to be able to do is I need to come in here and change this to tell it that I want to play movie number two and movie number three. Now I should also check to make sure that the additive blending mode is turned on. It looks like it is. So I can see here that all of my videos are playing back all in the same place. They're all coming back in as additive, which is great. Just what I wanted. And they're playing relatively one right on top of uh, another, which is, that's fine so far. Now if I want to be able to control this a little more, I'm going to have to come back in uh, and add a few other controls to try and get this to uh, play back in the way that I want it to. And the first thing that I might think about really wanting to have is a start and stop control. Um, and so I can use some trigger values to take care of that. So I want to go ahead and make a trigger value here um, that's going to send out a zero. This is going to be my stop trigger value. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this zero here to the speed of my um, movie player. So there's a a zero for speed, here's another zero for speed, and we need one more zero for speed for our third one. Great. So now I can tell it that I want to stop. Good. So I can stop my videos from playing, which is very handy. Let's go ahead and move these guys a little bit closer as well. I also need a start command. So I can do the same thing. I can duplicate my trigger value here. And then I can use, uh, use this to send a 1 instead of a 0. And send out a 1. And I can also connect that to the same place. So let's go ahead and connect that to the speed of all three of these movie players. Now it might be really handy to actually have some kind of um, determination to see what's happening here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a comment box so I know what's happening. I'm going to say this is start playback. Stop playback. I'm going to go ahead and just put those comment boxes right on top of this guy and arrange it so that there we go so there's my start playback there's my stop playback and that'll be really important here in just one second when I actually need to be able to see how I can um, connect this to an actual control system all right, the next thing that would be useful for me to be able to do is it would be really useful for me to be able to tell Isadora that I'd like this to go to the start position um, of this particular movie file. So I can see here that my position, I can set that manually. So let's see, if I come in and set that to zero here, I can tell it to go to the beginning of the movie. Um, position, I'm going to go ahead and one zero and make sure that I can toggle it in and out of that place. Great. So now they're all lined up at zero. These are all different durations though. So if I start this, so I go ahead and trigger my, trigger my start. I can see that they're playing back, but I can also see that the, as they're playing back, they're proceeding at different times. So while this is really a great way to get everything to start together, nothing's ever going to stop together. Um, so if I hit this uh, stop trigger, it'll stop, um, but if I hit start again when it wraps around a loop, I'll still have this um, kind of staggered element. So I'm going to go ahead and add another trigger here that's just zero so that we can actually tell Isadora to go back to zero as a starting place for our position. Great. All right, so now I've got a control system set up 
so that I can see what's going on more or less. Let's go ahead and get this comment box moved into a place where I can see it a little bit better. All right, great. So now that I can start these together, I can stop them and I can reset them. My next question is, how would I actually build a control system um, so that an operator who is not, let's say, familiar with the programming aspect of this, be able to actually control this uh, in a show? Because while it's really great uh, as a tool for a programmer, being able to locate these little tiny boxes to be able to click through to, the, um, to start these movies is maybe not the most ideal way to be working with uh, a playback system. So to that end, what I can do is I can actually come in here and I can turn on my actor show control split. So now what I have is I have a window pane that's here on the right that's the actual patch that's running, and here on the left is the show control module. Um, that an operator is going to see when they're uh, at the show. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and make a couple buttons. So let's make a button to start off here and let's come in and we'll call this start, start video, and on the text we'll say start. I'm going to go ahead and change this color to green because green is our universal color for go. Great. And I want the text on that to be just a little bit more legible, so maybe 14. Great, so I've got a start. I'm going to duplicate that. I want to stop. And finally, I want to reset. And actually, my stop one here, I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this to make it a nice bright red. Reset, I'll go ahead and give a color like uh, blue. That seems like a pretty neutral color. Now you'll notice that here on my buttons, um, I've got corresponding trigger values, one, two, three. And what I can do is I can connect these trigger values to the inputs here inside of my patch. So to start this guy, I'm gonna come over here uh, and connect it to the start. I can see one corresponds to one. Stop, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and drag it over here to my stop command. So that will trigger the zero and then reset. I'm going to come back here and tell it to come to zero. So now if I turn, uh, turn off edit mode, I can actually use these as buttons. So in looking closely here, I can see that what I actually did here by accident is I connected this to the value uh, box instead of to the trigger box, which is what I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate these. I'm going to throw away my originals. There we go. And now I'm going to come back in and connect these up to the right places. So I'm going to connect this to trigger. Oh, undo that. I'm going to connect start <laughs> to start, stop, to stop, reset, to reset. Now I'm also going to come in here and make sure that this is set to the right value. So stop playback, that's got to send a zero. To trigger, uh, to start playback, I need a one. And to reset, I need a zero. Good. So now I should be able to turn off edit mode here. And I should be able to use this to start the playback of my video. Looks like it's working just fine. Should also be able to stop that. And I should be able to reset that also. So again, there my start, stop, reset. And that's basic. Um, playback control, at least for running a movie here inside of Isadora, both from getting it talking to the actual stage and then uh, creating a control for how your operator some buttons that they can press to actually run this whole thing.